Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. Here we gonna continue on our uh, merry path here. Yeah, continuing the Sound conversation. <laughs> uh, so we were talking a little bit about some of these bicycle related yeah. orders. So maybe just so, for those who weren't uh, um, uh, aware, um, specifically the, there were eight orders on the council meeting agenda last night. The first one basically asked, uh, was just a great order, just ask all the city staff to uh, basically make specific recommendations on what we can do, right? For, by, then in the, uh, for the sake of safety of cyclists, motorists, and pedestrians all. So nobody could argue with that. Mm -hmm. the, the order number three, which is the second of the bike-related ones, mm -hmm. uh, was one it calls specifically for um, flex post separated bike right. lanes and intersections along Massachusetts Avenue, and Hampshire you mean, Street. You mean at intersections or and? No, and intersections. So basically, you know, entire lengths of these streets wow. along Mass Ave. Now, honestly, for anybody who's ever been in Mass Ave, if you can imagine going mm -hmm. from the curb right immediately into cyclists whizzing by, then cars, mm -hmm. and then b and buses. No. And where are the trucks going to lo uh, load no. and unload and whatever? Can't where are the it. taxi cabs going Can't to be? Do it. So this needs some more discussion, yeah. and that was my whole point. But honestly, if I had gotten up there to speak to that and say, I think this needs more work, um, they would have had my head. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just stayed away. But other people. Right. right. No, it was a lot of, yeah. there was a lot of passion in it. And yeah. you know, when somebody is killed, of course, you're going to sure. expect passion, right? But the, the remedies don't really match the causes yeah. is my main point. So order number four uh, wants to, uh, um, the uh, a committee to go and revisit, and not just revisit, but to bring about the uh, adding a bike bus lane to Pearl Street. Yeah, I don't now, get that one. Well, a couple of years ago, there was a proposal to basically wipe out all the parking on one side of Pearl Street for the that. whole length. Yeah. Even though the only accidents on Pearl Street occur at Mass Ave, if you look at the at the mm -hmm. map. Hmm. So they just want to wipe it out, and there was a lot of pushback about that. So they said, "Look, we've got to." Without driveways. So the resolution was, "Let's p pave the street, do the restructuring of the street, mm -hmm. get everything ready, and then this is a matter of paving, of uh, striping and and markings. So we can do worry about that later." Yeah. So now that people are taking advantage, in my opinion, of this fatality to push a particular point of view with minimal public process. So, well, yeah. uh, but I think there will be some public process yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there was another call, order number five, um, for, uh, let's see, do we, uh, for reconstructing um, off street paths in any and all plans for reconstructing Massachusetts Avenue, for basically I think all of Mass Massachusetts Avenue. Hmm. From Arlington down to MIT. To do what? Uh, basically to either eliminate all the parking, which I think is ultimately where it would have to lead because everything else is just not possible, or move the cars in t to the center of the road, closer to the center of the road to allow bicyclists to ride to the right of the parked cars. Hmm. If you think about how many conflicts there, mm -hmm. that will allow... And let me, let me throw in another one too. Mm -hmm. How many, if people, people do bicycle at night for those, you know, I mean, they do, I have. Uh, and the street lamps are great for illuminating the major part of the street. Mm -hmm. If you say, okay, sorry, cyclists, you can't be out, you shouldn't be out in the middle of the street, you should be over by the curb. You'll be going underneath trees and whatever. You'll be going from light into dark, light yeah, into dark. Uh, there will be, uh, there are bump outs there. There are a lot of obstructions and other hazards. That's where all the, the sewer grates are and everything, too. This needs a little more thinking, I think. So, but anyway, that's it. Uh, order number six, again, now wants to, demands uh, uh, protected, so-called protected bike lanes on Mass Ave between Cedar Street and Harvard Street. A lot of these are duplicative. Between Cedar, that's, they not, wanna, that's they wanna, not a lot of... That's not a lot of... Uh, well, Cedar road. Street all the way down to... It's not like, even... Basically, clear. Trolley Square down into Harvard Square. There's also the North well, Mass Cedar. Oh, starting at Cedar yeah. Harvey. They also talk about doing oh. similar treatment on, on Broadway yeah. uh, and, and elsewhere. Um, now, I'm going to say one thing yeah. very specifically about North Mass Ave. Right now, mm -hmm. they got nothing. They got basically, it feels like a highway. They, need, they need to do they need something, something there. Now, That's if they true. want to put the bikes on the sidewalks or find something, the sidewalks are pretty wide out there. You could probably mm -hmm. figure something out there uh, and, you know, hey, knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. It'll cost you a lot of money. 
but knock yeah. yourself out. Yeah. Um, trying to do some of those same treatments in places like Broadway or Cambridge Street or Hampshire Street, I think basically inevitably means eliminating all parking on those streets. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see any other way around that, and I don't think that's a good idea. Well, so. most of it's metered parking anyway, so it's not well, like it's overnight parking. Right. Well, I'm sorry, even for the meter, the businesses along Cambridge right. Street, I think they would not be too happy about this either. No, so anyway, there'll be a conversation yeah. to be sure. Um, so there are a few others in here. I'll, so, I'll just yeah. jump to the one which I thought was incredibly relevant. Um, it was uh, order number 11 that the city manager uh, is, re is requested to consult with staff on what authority the city has to further restrict the routes of travel and delivery hours oh, of right. oversized trucks on city streets. Now that's very specific to the actual fatality. Anybody in the city knows that there is an abundance of very oversized trucks using very undersized streets. Right, but it was also at an hour, and then you'd probably expect a truck to be delivering. It yeah, I mean, between seven and eight in the morning. Their yeah. commerce is commerce. I mean, people yeah. go to the supermarkets; they want to buy stuff. Yeah. The supermarkets trucks have to came deliver huge, that huge trailer. I don't know yeah. where did they determine where that truck was going. Um, no, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure it's known, but I, I don't know what it is. And it yeah. was it was eggs. They were carrying eggs of all places, or at so least from the egg to market. A market. Probably going to something like a like a star market or the market, market basket, basket or something like yeah. that. I mean, you have to move goods. There's no yeah. question about it. Do you absolutely need to have 18 wheelers? That's true. I'm not so sure about that. Right. Um, and could you restrict? Uh, Without uh, interference could you, could commerce. You, could yeah, you that's much point. more yeah. clearly delineate yeah. after an appropriate truck study, mm -hmm. uh, traffic study, um, what streets the trucks can be on, and then basically right. send the word out. Cyclists should then sit the word out says, yeah. if the this is a truck should, route, yeah. stay the hell away from it. Yeah. Or, the, or just be forewarned. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 no matter how careful yeah. you are, you yeah. are in proximity with a, a monolithic thing. see you. Right. So you just, you, it's just best to stay as far away from mm -hmm. big trucks as possible. I would get off the bike, go on the sidewalk. You can do that. Some people yeah. do. Or I yeah. say you, you get past them. Or you pause and let them get past right. you, but never don't be, next to them. be yeah. close to big trucks. Yeah. yeah. That you necessarily have to do a little dance with city buses. It couldn't have been going, but, I mean, I don't really know, but how fast can an 18 wheeler go through Port Square? It wasn't Square? going fast because so, if, you look, if, you, if, so, if you look at the photos of the day, uh, what you saw was the truck was right pretty much where the oh, fatality you, so occurred. Are there were photos? Well, it wasn't so much photos of, of the sort of horror, but it was oh. photos showing the truck was pretty much right where the okay, so saw, fatality occurred. So the truck was, was still any, there uh, and with a bicycle under it. So, wow. so you know, if the truck was moving at any speed at all, the yeah. truck would have been further down. So yeah. it was not moving fast. It was just, mm -hmm. it, the, you know, you want, if you get caught under, you get caught under and that's oh. what happened. And it's a horrible, horrible thing that happened. Yeah. So, without a doubt, this was the big feature of that meeting last oh, yeah. night. Um, you know, again, I, I take issue with some of the, uh, the overly specific yeah. things. I mean, this is a city that prides itself in public process. Yeah. You know, that you can have a, uh, you could spend three, we're doing Envision Cambridge. We're going to take three years to do Envision Cambridge. We're going to talk, all the stakeholders get involved. That's what we do in Cambridge. But, you know, the bottom line is we have a city that's grown. We have people that have cars, that live on streets, that have parking. We have bicyclists. We are going to have driverless cars they're talking about. I mean, we are... It's not, things are changing. Things are changing. Unless we dig up every street and make it dedicated to one transportation or <clears> another, it's going to be a compromise. It's, everything's going to be a compromise. And, and, that's and okay. I just feel like it's just crazy. Like uh, we had talked about, I mean, I said, why can't you just have certain recommended routes for bicyclists and work on those? I think that's you a know? great idea. And, not, and, 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 you know, just say, okay, most people go from here to here and here to here. Let's have these dedicated that we really promote and really make those safe. Right. And, and if you go other ways and stuff, okay, we'll help, but we can't cover everything. Can't and cover the same everything. thing with cars. Maybe I we agree. should have cars. That, look, if you don't want to have bike, don't avoid those routes. I think there there should Has be a better word. Has anyone talked well, about this at all? 
Um, people do. <laughs> no, I mean, I, they have I, actually dedicated I routes the, the, said that they're not. The difficulty is, is that it's sort of like yeah. the jug handle that they yeah. put in in Porter Square. You put in the infrastructure, say, do this, then people yeah. don't do well, it. Well, see, that's it. People are never going to always right. do what you well, want them to do. Well, the thing is, is that if you're a cyclist, and I, if, let's say if I want to get from yeah. point A to point B, go chances are I'm going to go the shortest way yeah. or the fastest way. And there's no enforcement. We right. do not have the money or the, the woman manpower to do enforcement, right. which is everyone's also arguing about that. How come they don't get tickets? How come we don't ticket bicyclists right. that do wrong? How come we don't ticket the people at door? Who's going to do it? We don't even monitor recycling. Right. So, the, so, so who's the, do the cheap and easy answer is, you, yeah. is segregation. What you do is you, you I say would like bikes to, over here only, cars and, only here, trucks only there. And, and, and if I don't they think say I feasible. can't park certain places and I knew that, that's fine with me too. But you're yeah. never going to get rid of all the cars and you're never going to get, we don't want to get rid of all the bicyclists. Well, there's and another, there's know, another fact just... that I think any traffic engineer will tell you, which is that if you eliminate parked cars from the street, cars speed up. What do you mean? Because they, they call it friction. They said there's a, oh, there's a psychological friction yeah. that you feel that, well, I'm not, I, can, I, I think I go 25, 30 miles an hour here because I've got these cars. Take I the see. cars away. It's a raceway. Wow. And that's just the way it is. Now, you can, yeah. you're gonna, we're going to lower the citywide speed limits to 25, I suppose. I, I have been driving at 20 and 20 to feel, and it's perfectly fine. I'm actually okay, I think, on mo most roads with about 28. No, sorry. I, I can live I, with 25. I'm still going to disagree with you because I was doing 20, and I was not being impeded, and I feel like it's safer. You can see those bikes. You can see 25, 28, you might hit a bike. That me. <laughs> All right, let's go on. But there are definitely places yeah. where 20 Anyway, is this is serious stuff, yeah. and I just feel yeah. like... Uh, so anyway, yes. it, was, it was a huge, huge thing, uh, but, yeah. um, you know, where it goes. Now, one thing, I suppose... Um, oh, actually, let me just thing. say one other thing. Then I want to say something about some um, ballot analysis. Not ballot analysis, but oh, election right. analysis okay. that I looked at. It was, uh, I think That's people may find interesting. Okay. Um, there was another order, I won't give you the whole of it, uh, that was on the agenda about having to do with Alewife, which is... Is this a policy order, or was this... This was order management? number nine, and okay. it had to do with um, um, uh, that the council oppose any pathway oh, or yes, other okay. intrusion yeah. that might be developed through the woods, marshes, or bordering land subject to flooding up or along the Little River. Who, now, is, who brought this up? Um, it, was a, it was Kelly and Devereaux. Now, mm -hmm. generally speaking, I think, well, that's fine because I think I wouldn't want to be building too much more too close to the oh, habitat yeah, and right, whatever. Right. But, you know, as a person who leads local walks with AMC yes, and who just goes yeah. wandering out there because it's a yeah. neat place, yeah. there's at least one place where I would hope they would make an exception to that notion. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, I, th I think this got um, was made subject to the charter, right? Anyway, so oh, it? it'll come up at the next meeting. Right. There's a place where the city put a lot of effort and money, uh, and and money from elsewhere too, to do this uh, um, kind of recreated wetland area. Mm -hmm. You know, it has boardwalks. Is uh, this right behind Alwife there? Yeah. Okay. It's a beautiful place. And, oh, we and, walked there. That's right. Yeah, and I was there. I was going to lead a walk from there to Oak Grove uh, right. uh, oh, last weekend, that. and then we got rained out. Oh, but rained out. Uh, we went out there anyway. Yeah, I've and done we, that. We yeah, did a, a we nice did a walk on walk. both sides of the Little River, and one there is at least one place where I really think they should put a pedestrian bridge over mm. the Little River. Mm. Now that would be completely in violation to this, the requirements of this order. Mm. Now. I can agree with 99% of the intention mm -hmm. of this order, but I would love to see a bridge that connect, connects the Discovery Park stuff, which is up on the Route 2 mm -hmm. side of the Little River, the north side of the river, yeah. and where the restored wetland area is on the mm -hmm. south side of the river. That would make such a phenomenally a nice walkway. Near the other boardwalk, you got to walk all the way in. No, but I mean, over, I remember going over a little bridge, but closer to the to the Alwife. That's right over by the station. Right. Yeah. So okay. you, that's how you access the right. path on so the. So you're asking for something yeah. further down so where Discovery yeah, Park from, is. If you start at the Alwife station, you can you can head on the south side of the river through mm -hmm. where the, the recreated wetland area is, which is, by the way, serves a water quality enhancement yeah. function. This is not just pretty, pretty places, right? Right, um, And then you can walk all the way back to Alewife, and then you can go up to the north side, and you can walk all the way over to where the so-called Silver Maple Forest is or was oh, right. up there. And then you can walk straight back there. It's so much nicer if you could just make a nice loop through there. Oh, so you can't do that now. You can't do that now, right? And the Little River is a little river. It's not big. Yeah. 
So if you could do it there, at any point reasonably far west along there, you make a much more interesting environment and would be very, very helpful. So why is this being brought people. up? Because somebody wants to do that? I'm or? not sure what the, what the current... Well, it sounds um, like they're, somebody's suggesting it because they're opposing it. Um, yeah, Unless so just came up with well, it. you know, a few years ago we kept hearing over and over and over again about the silver maple forest and right, save the silver right, maple right. forest. So it didn't for better or worse, well, I mean, most of it's intact. But the thing is, is that where the on the northern part, in all in Belmont, yeah. the housing development that was promised is going oh, forward. Oh, oh, right, right. But okay. there's still a, a a sort of jungle-like area out there that's still mm. part of I think what they called silver mm. maple forest, but not the whole of it that they had before. Okay. Um, so anyway, so that's one thing. Now, um, now switching gears entirely. All right. All right, and we'll show a little graphics about this okay. here in a minute. Here, okay. So uh, I was kind of curious when we had the um, September primary election. That, uh, not citywide. I mean, yeah, I think Pat. It was only Jaylen, a couple districts, right? Pat Jalen and uh, versus Leland Chung was one competitive mm -hmm. race. The other one was. Incumbent Tim Toomey and challenger Mike Connolly in a in the 26th Middlesex House District race, mm -hmm. uh, and there was I guess arguably an upset in that Mike Connolly won the election the primary election, right? Uh, and by just what 300 something? Uh, yeah, several yeah. hundred votes, maybe three or four hundred votes, yeah. something like that, right? So I was kind of curious. Uh, I said, okay, election's over, that's fine, um, but I got the voter history file of showing who voted, not how they voted but who they voted through, I got it for the whole city. Couldn't get it, well, I suppose I could get it, but I didn't bother getting it for the Somerville part of that district. Uh -huh. But I definitely got it for the Cambridge part of the district because I was kind of curious yeah. to see whether the data would actually show something interesting about, well, why did the election go the way it did? Mm -hmm. And normally when I do some of this analysis, I find stuff, I go, well, that's kind of interesting. This one I actually found pretty stunning. Mm. Okay. So, so I'm going to show some pictures okay. here. So, so let's let's so call this up right here, right now, and right? and I'll sort of talk you through as we do this. Okay. Now, um, whoops. Oh, I, I think we're supposed to press yeah. this there first, you go. and there then we, go. we and then there we do. You go. Now we're all there. We go. There all right. Go. Okay. All right. Hopefully this is pretty pretty visible. Now I'm going to show you three things in succession here. These are just. In the in the Toomey, the Cambridge portion of the Toomey district, the 26th Middlesex district, these are just some bar graphs showing demographically their gr age groups are three year groupings from 18 to 20, 21 to 23, all the way up to so 110 years old. That's the bottom old. figure that's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of on the on the horizontal okay. axis. And what is the and then on what the you left? see the bars just basically show yeah. how many registered voters in these in ones that here, age group in these particular age okay. groups. And that's from 012. Right. So what you see is is that you know it's a very high number of people registered. Who are in the 29, you know, 20, right around actually here. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, right. in there, okay? 32. And then it drops off, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look here. This is 2012, yeah. 14, and 16. I want you to just note here that, that the demographic break by age doesn't change that much. Should, so I, let's, should I click yeah, on so let's 214? Click on this. So we go from there to 2014. That's 14. The numbers went up a little bit in the younger range, but mm -hmm. the general shape is un, not that changed. Okay. Click one more time. So once again, you this see that you know, there's a little bit more in the younger range of people who are registered voters there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just in that, yeah. These are registered voters. Registered voters. So you see more people in the younger range are registered, but the mm -hmm. general shape of the dem of uh, of this histogram it doesn't change that much. Okay. Okay. So now the, I was re mainly trying to sort of show that there wasn't too much change. Okay. Um, so now in the shape. shape. Okay. Okay. So now let's click one more time here. Now this now, is voted. Now this is in the 2002 election. No, 12. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, 2012 election. Mm -hmm. And what you see, and this is something everybody knows, is that yeah. people who are in the older demographics, like the highest voting one mm -hmm. is in the sort of 63 to 65 right. range. Right. So you see some, there's a bit of a bump down in the lower a, lower range, and then it yeah. kind of drops, and then it, another little mini bump, and then the big, 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 big bump is up in the yeah. middle, up around Which mid 60s. Which are his constituents. And then yeah. it sort of you know, drops yeah. off as people drop off. But basically. most people voted were between right. like 50 and, and 60, and so, yeah. That's right. Okay, so that's what you see. Now, yeah. now, now let's shift to 2014. 
a little bit of a change. A the overall numbers are the overall numbers yeah. are a little bit lower because it was yeah. an off-year election. Okay. Okay. But you see, you see, there's a little bit more of a yeah. pronounced bump down in the in lower the range. Yes. All right, and then it sort of drops off and then rises up yeah. here. So what's the difference between that and this year? Well, let's click one more time. Wow. This is this year. Okay. Much so higher. What you see here, Look at that. Not sure. only did the younger demographic yeah. in the sort of 34 up to, well, actually 24 20, up 24 to mid 30s up to like, range, uh, not, not only yeah. did it go up, by the way, at the same the time, yeah. uh, Councillor Toomey's actual votes went up too. Mm. It's the, the, the number of people, or at least his most likely voters, so yeah. in some of the older ranges, their numbers also went up. So they the, turned out. It's just that more the, people turned out in the other. In the age. in the lower yeah. one, they shot up phenomenally. Like, and I don't think for I've the ever, younger candidate. I don't yeah. think I've ever actually seen something so dramatic yeah. it's shown it's here. Amazing. Is that the 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 traditional bump that you expect to see mm -hmm. is basically been replaced by yeah. a much bigger bump in this sort of bimodal. Be interesting to see if you could overlay this with the registered voters from we can do that. I mean, but you, know, you can't. Right well, one now, thing you can certainly do yeah. here is you can we can just sort of walk through each of these again. Right. Just take one quick pass here. Uh, actual voters in yeah. 12, yeah. 14, yeah. and then look at the shift. Yeah. Really right? dramatic. Yeah. Real difference in mm -hmm. there. By the way, not, uh, not that we want to sort of dwell and get, and, yeah. and get too overly nerdy here. Oh, here we but, go. Um, right. But if, if anyone wants here, you can. we actually have a PDF posted in there oh. that actually shows not only those charts and graphs, oh, but down also here. the actual numbers. And I'll just say one thing again, yeah. as I sort of nerd out on this, I yeah. don't want to overwhelm people with this. Okay. But at the very bottom of the line there, what you'll mm -hmm. see is that overall in this district, in 2012, the median... Is this 2012, this yeah. block? Okay. We'll just look at the median. So the oh. median voting age yeah. was 56.9 in 2012. Okay. It was 57.42 in 2014, and then it dropped like six yeah. years down to 51.82. Yeah. So if, you can, if you're shifting the median and the mean mm -hmm. by like five years or more, yeah. that's a huge number of voters well, that actually get, went in yeah. there. Okay. Now, by the way, if you look at the line right above it, you'll see that the, uh, again, I'll just sort of say it here, that the actual yeah. number of voters went from 2080 to 2555 to 3969. Yeah, so a lot more people voted. Yeah, and a lot more people voted even amongst Toomey's best demographics. Right. Yeah. But in the lower age range, they shot up. Yeah, so it was a very pop, a lot of people went out to vote because I think it was a very advertised yeah, uh, race. Uh, I and, do. Actually, we yeah. want to, we just, we just faded to black here. So oh. I think we want to come back here. Let me, let me, let me, yeah. oh gosh. There we All go. Right. So there's this. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get us back now here. You preview us and go back. There we there go. There we go. Yay! We're still here. Ooh, well, how can we look so oh, different? Oh, I think I think we hit a different camera. That's yeah. why. So we'll go back here. So there we there go. There we go. All right. See, fancy. We can do. We can. We can figure this. Oh my right. goodness. Okay. So anyway, so let me, that, let me, that is very interesting. Let me say a few things about this because um, yeah. I, I looked at that and I said, well, this, yeah. you know, is a sort of a math geeky guy. Mm -hmm. I find that interesting. And, yeah. and I will tell you, a lot of other people tend to find this stuff interesting, I'm too. Sure. I'm sure some people will talk to me about this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But um, the, I, I look at it and I say, well, what's the cause? All right. Well, one is just a, a good campaign goes out, targets their voters, mm -hmm. brings them out. So, but I think I feel some obligation to mm -hmm. speculate a little bit too, which okay. is that, you know, this one candidate, Mr. Connolly, was very much affiliated himself with Bernie Sanders. True. And this is in September, so right. you know, conventions have passed. So right. these, there's a certain kind of passion it's still, it's still out amongst there. the Sanders yep. supporters. So now, mm -hmm. you know, we have to start the revolution, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of what we tell it's like our revolution is their organization. Well, even Bernie talked about that. He definitely I mean, does. Continue so this. Uh, I yeah. definitely think there's a little mm -hmm. hint of that that's spilled in the Oh yeah, line. definitely. But in a month, we will have President-elect Hillary Clinton. We suppose. We hope. Uh, Maybe some of the fervor will die down a little bit. I don't think so. It may or may not. You know, this is going to be an interesting thing to watch over the coming yeah. year. Uh, another thing uh, I, I kind of have to speculate about because I get so involved in municipal elections right. is that will this phenomenon continue and spill over into the municipal election politics? Uh, yeah, it might. 
It might. Except that already it was sort of there. Sort of there. I mean, there were certainly some candidates in the last few years who were targeting a younger younger demographic, like the Mazen site, for example. I mean, Mike Connolly ran for a candidate. Mike Connolly ran. But he also ran against other people like that had similar values, where in this district, he was the only one representing that. Yeah. So. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see whether yeah. a younger demographic it can be um, right. uh, exploited more to, and sort of brought out. Because they generally do not vote in the municipals, right? Uh, history, typically not. Right. Typically not. So we'll see whether that uh, effect kind of persists or whether people try right. and exploit it. Because honestly, if you look at the actual distribution of registered voters, mm-hmm. um, you know, usually the act people who actually vote don't match it, except in presidential elections when it actually kind of comes close. Except for this one might be. I'm not sure we'll Denver people are going to oh. come out like they did for Obama. But. Oh, one thing I'll, 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 I promise you, when we get the what? data, we will show at least yeah. the Cambridge version of how the I hope so. registered voters oh, compare yeah. to the actual voters. I want to see how many Trump I'll have that sure available are. in mid to late November, and we'll run a program. We'll sort of go through that. Do you remember how many Trump votes you got in the primary? Uh, Here? Don't or remember. Just in Massachusetts, I know he won. There were so few Republicans. Right? I know. Yeah, um, that's true in Cambridge. So, you right. see, yeah, the fact that Trump wins the Republicans. Honestly, actually, amongst the the data that I was showing yeah. there, I didn't even subtract out the Republicans because it's such a small fraction. Huh. Maybe curious to see and, the presidential the, results I, in Cambridge, though. It will be, be curious to see how many Trump voters there were. Not many. I, I, I you know what? <laughs> well, I, I mean, they'll be they'll exist, but that'll be about it. They so. don't exist. Yeah. All right, we just right. have, so let, oh, let's quickly, you have that poster about the oh, media yeah, yeah. elections? So, uh, I think you put it on the counter. Um, I did. It was oh, floating around here. So anyway, just oh, to say what we were talking about, and then we'll find it. There it is. Yay. Uh, okay. So this coming weekend, is it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. You can still register. Right? It's free. Media the election. Off, CCTV is mm-hmm. basically behind this here. Yeah. And it's happening at the main Cambridge library. library. And it's... Uh, 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Great speakers. Jim Browdy, Dante Ramos from The Globe, uh, Dan Kennedy, like really journalists, reporters from around the area. Yeah. So it's a, it's topical. Yeah. And it's a pretty good group. And there's a lot of time for discussion with some pretty yes. reasonable people. I intend to be there. I'm going to be there. I uh, might lead a discussion. That sounds good. That okay. Right. So anyway, I think we're done for today. So I guess we'll see you all next week on yeah. Cambridge Inside Out. Good night.